Hey everyone, welcome back. I've been riding my 2021 Specialized Diverge Sport Carbon around for nearly a thousand miles now, and I'm loving every minute of it. However, there are a few things that have come to my attention that I wish I had known before buying the bike. So in this video, I'm gonna give you seven things you should consider before jumping on the hugely popular Specialized Diverge bandwagon. So number one is geometry. In my previous 500 mile review of this bike, I barely glossed over one of the things that I like most about this bike, which is the relaxed geometry and stable handling. I know, it's super vague. So to elaborate a bit, I think it's important for a potential buyer to have some perspective on where the Diverge falls against other bikes within this category. Now frame geometry, admittedly a pretty dry topic, is actually pretty key in determining how a bike will behave on the road or trail. In the gravel slash all road category, on the spectrum from more upright to more aggressive stack and reach numbers, the Diverge actually tends towards more upright meaning in theory it's good for those super long days in the saddle where back and neck strain can become an issue. Now without going too deep into the geometry charts, one of the things that stands out about the Diverge is that compared to other popular bikes in this segment, like the Ibis Haka, the Santa Cruz Stigmata, or the Cannondale Topstone, the stack, which is the vertical distance from the bottom bracket center to the top of the head tube, is actually larger on the Diverge. Now this partially contributes to the more upright riding position, improving comfort during long hours in the saddle. It should also be noted that the higher stack is partially achieved by employing a lower bottom bracket than the average bike in this segment. A lower bottom bracket gives a rider the sensation of riding in the bike rather than on top of the bike, and it's generally a good thing for confidence and control. The main drawback of having a bike with too low a bottom bracket is that it increases the probability of pedal strikes on rocks, roots, and other trail features, since the pedals are consequently lower to the ground. Now, working in harmony with the lower bottom bracket and higher stack is the head tube angle. At 70.5 degrees is on the slacker end of the spectrum compared to other bikes in this space. This, of course, is a major contributor to the stability of the bike, as generally, the more slack the head tube angle, the more stable the handling becomes. So based on the frame geometry alone, who is a Diverge for? Well, I would argue that it's for someone who values a stable, controlled ride experience over a super nimble and twitchy ride. I think the ideal Diverge owner appreciates being able to rip down a steep gravel trail, but also highly values a comfortable, relatively upright bike for the paved roads that ultimately lead there. Okay, so with the geometry out of the way, the rest are more specific things about this bike that you might also consider. Number two, the stock axles are hex bolt only, which means that there's no lever on the through axle itself. Now, I actually really like this feature. It's very clean look and there aren't any levers protruding off the fork legs or the rear dropouts but it does mean that you need to have a six millimeter hex wrench available to remove your wheels. But then again, who doesn't have a six mil wrench somewhere on their bike or kit or car or garage these days? Still, if you want, you can replace these with a more standard levered axle. It's just something to consider. Number three, the internal cable routing looks fantastic. It's very clean, there's no doubt about that. But during any rough sections of road or trail, my cables actually rattled a bit inside the frame which, as you may know, can be one of the most infuriating sounds in existence. Now, mine rattled more so after I shortened the brake lines in the front derailleur housing, which, as I mentioned in the previous video, were hilariously too long. After some investigating, I discovered that there aren't any inner cable guides like there are on some frames. So I use this Jaguar housing damping stuff that you wrap around the offending cable, and then you feed into the down tube, and that seemed to do the trick. Now, this stuff is way overpriced, and there are other options available, but I wanted a set it and forget it solution to the problem because I really can't stand when my bikes make any noises they're not supposed to. And cable rattling is right up there with bottom bracket creaking. Also, you should know that contrary to many road front derailleurs, the GRX front derailleur uses full length housing, which means that the housing butts right up against this cable stop on the derail itself, rather than a cable stop somewhere else on the frame. Now this is actually pretty nice because it makes shortening the housing really easy. You just pull the cable through a little bit and snip off the desired amount of housing. Oh, and before I forget, if you're finding this video helpful or useful in any way, then be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on other bike-related content like this. All right, number four. The highly sloped top tube on the Diverge seems to be a hot topic. Some people hate the look of it and prefer a more classic look to their frame. Others, like myself, actually appreciate the functionality. The sloped top tube allows more seat posts to protrude, which improves compliance and therefore comfort. It also improves the standover height, and for us shorter riders, I'm five foot eight, that's actually a good thing. The only functional drawback of a sloped top tube like this is that it leaves less space in the front triangle for frame bags. Even a half frame bag on a 52 centimeter frame like this 
would make it tough to access the water bottles with normal cages. So if you plan to do any bike packing or touring on this bike and want to use a frame bag, you might have to resort to using side load bottle cages, which is no big deal. It's just another thing to consider. Okay, number five. The stock wheels and tires can only be described as tanks. Now I've said it in a different video, two videos actually, but upgrading the stock wheels and tires has made a greater difference on this bike than on any previous bike that I've owned. To add to that, the stock G540 rims were out of true after only 100 miles or so. It's not a huge deal and nothing I couldn't fix in my own workshop, but I'm thinking Specialize is actually expecting people to upgrade these wheels as they really don't do the bike justice. Now if you get a chance, check out the detailed video up here or down in the description where I save over a kilogram of weight by upgrading the stock wheels and tires to these Hunt Carbon wheels. I think if you're on the fence between two levels of the Diverge like the Sport or the Comp or the Comp versus the Expert, I'd much rather forfeit the upgrades offered by the higher end model and use the money saved to upgrade the wheels. Or if money's not an object, get the higher model, but just be sure to ditch the stock wheels. It's a game changer. Number six. Now this is a sport carbon model, which gets a standard carbon seat post. The next level up, which is the comp model, gets the carbon Terra seat post, which isn't highly advertised, but is supposed to offer a lot more compliance. The idea here is that the additional flex in the seat post adds to the rider's comfort, and it's a $250 component when purchased separately. Now I haven't actually ridden on one, so I can't say how much better it really is than a regular carbon post like this, but it is another thing to think about. Number seven, the specialized hover bar. It's a riser drop bar, which, I mean, I get the idea that you can be more upright on this bike than what's already afforded by the geometry, but I just plain don't like the look of the hover bar that much. Now, obviously this is a very personal choice and a superficial one at that, but I prefer a non-rise bar with shallower drops. So if you were wondering, the hover bar has 15 millimeters of rise, 103 millimeters of drop, 70 millimeters of reach, and 12 degrees of flare. Aside from the aesthetic, the bend at the clamping area actually makes it kind of inconvenient to mount anything on those few precious inches of exposed bar. Now I actually just installed these bars, which are the Ritchie Comp Beacon Bars, last night. As far as aesthetics, these are the ones that caught my eye at the right price. At around $45 US, these gravel-specific bars come in several widths from 400 to 460 millimeters. With zero millimeters of rise, shallower drop at 80 millimeters, and a much wider flare at 36 degrees, they checked all the boxes for me. I'll put out another video on the Ritchie handlebars once I get some miles on them and gather my thoughts. But I'm hoping they're gonna improve descending confidence, and of course, not so secretly, make the bike look much cooler. I know, I'm so shallow, right? So those are seven things you need to know about the Specialized Diverge, and I'll leave you with one bonus thing that you should know. Let's call it number 7.5. I used to use my old seat bag from my road bike to hold spares, CO2, and tools. And I never noticed just how noisy all that crap in the bag is until I was flying down a steep gravel descent. All I could hear were tools and CO2 cartridges banging around, and it made me unreasonably upset to hear. Now since then, I've upgraded to this Dekine Hot Lapse Gripper, which is a wrap-style seat bag that cinches everything down nice and tight. And since then, it's been rattle-free, creek-free bliss. Highly recommended for anybody transitioning from road to gravel. Now I understand that this may seem like a video just complaining about a bunch of stuff on the Diverge, but it's really not. I really do love this bike. It's far and away the best drop bar, roadish style bike that I've ever owned. And I really just want you to love yours as much as I do. So I hope these seven and a half considerations are helpful when making your purchase decision. And if you already own a Diverge, it'd be really nice to hear what things you wish you had known before buying down below in the comments. Okay, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.